Welcome back to Primetime News. Thanks for staying with us. As we continue our coverage of day one of the parish lockdown of St. Catherine, Janella Prestius is in Portmore, St. Catherine. Let me now join her live once again. Janella. Thanks once again, Herman. Well, traffic congestion, frustrated residents, and no social distancing. The order of the day here in Portmore earlier today. Now, I'm joined by Anthony Log and Anthony what a difference a few hours make i mean except for the few um, vehicles we see coming in it's practically almost a ghost town thank you janella now as you know we came here to portmore st catherine about six o'clock this evening shortly after six and getting here it took us a matter of seconds getting through the toll booth now for those of you familiar with the area getting into Portmore at that time of the evening, it's usually a challenge as there's often a traffic pileup along the toll road getting into Portmore. Now, things in Portmore are much quieter now, but here's what it looked like earlier today. The first thing that caught our eyes while on our way into St. Catherine was that there were hardly any vehicles on the usually busy causeway. We pulled up to this checkpoint just before the toll booth. Members of the security forces carried out checks and sought to verify those trying to enter. Most were allowed in, but for those who had no legitimate reason, they were sent back. We then made our way to another checkpoint, traffic at a standstill, as the police carried out temperature checks and verified identification. Moving from there seemed pretty easy. When we passed the Portmore shopping center, more traffic. Motorists weren't pleased. The police just need to come along, move the people, do some job. You know, police concentrating only on some people we might want to go talk. But the whole plaza, if you look behind me and look down the road, you can see how badly we, we, are, we, are, we are stuck, you know. So we hope that this thing will come off soon. The other stops were wholesale supermarkets and corner stores. The images were all the same, frustrated customers and long lines. To make matters worse, the physical distancing policy was not being observed. It was so bad at the Icy Cool Wholesale in Portmore St. Catherine that the police intervened. Mr. Porter is the owner of the wholesale. It is very hard to deal with the customers outside to practice the social distancing. No matter what we do, it's hard to get them to deal with it. But we are working on it. See, as you can, I'm trying to get some things to space them out some more. We're just outside the June supermarket here in Portmore, St. Catherine, and the line is massive. I'm just going to give you a better look at just how much people there are waiting outside here and the persons are on both sides. I walked for about one minute at moderate pace before I got to the end of the line. Just when we thought we saw it all, images outside Progressive Foods at Sovereign Village in Portmore Pines said no. Monique Moncrief shared her experience. When I come, the line been already. And me getting here, 10, 16, me enter through the door. One and a half hour later. Yeah, so I'm going, bread done. Rice, flour, all of them there. Two bread left back. I'm going to take up the two and I'm going to say, Lord God, me have to put it back and I feel away. As a God, as a lady, I pack up, but the little things, them, people, nobody, the, the shelf, them empty. Nobody, nobody, take up from the shelf. Over in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, these images could give the impression that it was a regular day. But don't be fooled. As we journeyed through the old capital, it became clearer that it was no ordinary day. The bus park was pretty much empty. In the meantime, for those who are unable to purchase food on Wednesday, they'll have to wait until Saturday before they can do so. Until then... It's like I live in, in fear because I say, is this really it? Like, I know so when it lit Jamaica, 
we really don't prepare fully for this yet, so people, we need to take it seriously. Anthony Log, TVJ News. Meanwhile, as the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise at the Allure call, uh, call center here in Portmore, other workers from call centers around Jamaica are expressing fear. Now, that matter was raised on our sister station, Power 106's The Morning Agenda. Workers in the business process outsource industry are on edge since news emerged of the first COVID-19 case at the Portmore-based call center Alorica last week. As the number of cases rise, so too is the anxiety among workers at other call centers. It is a nightmare, Jamaica. Speaking on Power 106's Morning Agenda Wednesday, this call center employee told the tale of substandard working conditions. He explained that with the exception of temperature checks and hand sanitizers, the working environment leaves much to be desired. You go to the call floor and it's 200 persons all taking calls at the same time. There are 200 persons all sharing headphones at the same time. There are 200 persons all sharing computers, keyboards, headsets. And in terms of sanitation, it's up to the workers to do that sanitation because there's no cleaning of anything after a shift. A not-so-different view from another call centre employee from another BPO firm. There's no social distancing, just like what he said on the floor. Yes. Oh my God, it's unbearable. Now, this runs in contradiction with recent statements by the president of the Business Process Industry Association of Jamaica, BPIJ President Gloria Henry, who has insisted that for the most part, BPOs are in full compliance with health and safety regulations. Interestingly, this is in line with the experience of a third call center employee from another BPO firm. Because I've been at home working, which most of the people are working from home at this moment. Uh, they had changed the shift to 11-hour shifts, so that would work, have us at work four days a week, not the five days, so that would minimize the amount of people on the production floor. Um, we got to work like two weeks ago, and some of the stations were closed up. No monitors, no CPUs, so that forced people to be distancing themselves from each other. What is clear is that it appears that not all BPOs are reading from the same script. Of worry, too, is the claim by workers that they could lose their jobs if they highlight the concerns to the media. I can tell you that, that we were told that if we speak to the media any way, shape or form, that we would face consequences. I can tell you that emphatically. So we were threatened in, in, in that manner. And I know as a fact that somebody out there will hear my voice and know who I am and they will report it to management and I will face consequences. So me coming out now and speaking about what is happening, I'm trying to save my, my fellow co-workers who are too afraid to speak. I'm trying to save this nation who doesn't know what is happening on these call floors. According to the BPIJ website, there are more than 60 BPO firms in Jamaica, which employs over 40,000 people. Joining me now is the Portmore Mayor, Leon Thomas. Now, I just want to pick up from the story that we just aired about concerns in the BPO sector. Sir, you also had expressed concerns um, sometime this week and last week. Oh, um, good night to all the listeners and uh, good night to you, General we have expressed this concern from way back as January um, about our BPO sectors. We also have meeting with the chief medical doctor of the parish and we have expressed the concern that we are having. Now, with the situation that arises at Alrika, it is something that we predict that was coming and we were echoing this all along to the powers that be to pay more attention to the BPO centers. What happened that they have asked a team to visit these BPO centers in Portmore. But what, when they arrive, the, the management space out the workers because we have also gotten report um, from the workers how they are dealing with the, 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 the virus. And um, we have made several calls for them to put a team together to visit these call centers. Um, unaware of their, their, of their um, 
timing that they are going there and nobody hear us um, now we are where we are and um, yesterday the minister came to Portmore and we have a discussion with him and I also expressed my concern about the BPO centre because yesterday I happened to visit three BPO centres and the centres that I visited Janelo, I can tell you that it is there waiting for those centres if the necessary action is not being taken. So just to be clear, you went there unannounced? Unannounced. I went there unannounced. And when I, when I turn up there, a lot of the workers is not wearing masks. And they are also in one cubicle. We could see three, four of them gathered. And even the space that is allowed to them for lunch areas and things like that, it is very, very small comparing to the number of personnel that work at the facility. Yes, they are sending home some of the workers um, and giving them laptop to work from and computer. But the thing is that we have over 700 workers there and they are working on three shifts. And it is a concern and the government need to pay more attention. We are not saying close them down. We are just simply saying put measures in place and have a team to visit to make certain that the measures that you put in place is adhered to. If and when they turn up there and the measures are not adhered to, then you need to take the necessary action. Don't wait until the virus breaks out, then you are saying that you are going to hold somebody accountable. Account for it. All right, so Mayor, one of the other th recommendations that you have made is for the government to establish special centers in the municipality which could be used to test for the coronavirus during the seven-day lockdown. Have you identified areas that can be used? Yes, um, with the discussion that we have with um, our medical doctors across the municipality and MP Fitzjackson, Colin Fagan and, and also Delahaye, they, we come up with some sites. We are looking at the Portmore Art Academy for one of those field hospitals and also the Cedar Grove Academy for um, field hospital. For the L Center, Greater Portmore L Center and Waterford L Center, those are two locations that we are suggesting that they set up the, t the testing sites. We are also looking at um, hotels in Portmore that we can have people quarantine at these hotels in Portmore. Because when you look at the vast majority of houses in Portmore, you can see that they have one bathroom, two bedrooms, and some is one bedroom, one bathroom. And you cannot send people to go and quarantine in those areas because you have more people living inside those units. So we have to move speedily. And I hope that the minister and the prime minister will look into the situation as quick as possible. You know, um, the, the, the other thing that we, we, we also ask for is the amount of cases that is in Portmore. Because if we know that we have like 15, 20 cases in Portmore, we know what to do. We know how we are going to approach the situation. We are getting the figure for the entire parish. And we would like to know where we are in Portmore. And even the Alarica workers that they tested, we would like to know how much is from Portmore. Because we are hearing a lot of rumors and people are getting scared about the whole thing, uh, thing that is coming out. Because the announcement last night by the Prime Minister, a lot of citizens become scared. Some of them actually leave in Portmore and go in other places in, 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 the, in Jamaica. All right. So, thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, certainly a lot more issues uh, to discuss. But that is where we have to put a lid on things here in our special coverage here in Portmore, St. Catherine. Herman, it's over to you.